Hey, what is going on guys? It's DK. Back at you with another video here to break on the four game NBA main set on Sunday. Before I get into the video, if you guys are new to the channel, my name is DK. I make daily videos and live stream for NBA and NFL slates on DraftKings. Uh, if you guys cannot watch these YouTube videos, I do up on Apple Podcasts. I have a link down below. If you guys are interested in signing up for premium content, I got now offer that on Patreon.com. If you sign up for the NBA package, you get the rest of NFL for free. And then finally, I want to thank Prize Picks for sponsoring the show. Uh, again, if you guys are not familiar with Prize Picks, it's a site where you can uh, basically you're, you're guessing on you know over under on fantasy projections, fantasy points, right? So for tomorrow, Jalen Brown projected for 46 fantasy points. Do you like the under? Do you like the over? Um, and you can mix and match sports here. You can use NFL, NBA, college, esports, they have all that good stuff. So if you guys want to try it out, you can use the code DKDFS. It's DKDFS, all one word. You get a 100% match up to $100. So basically, you put $100 in, you get $200 to play with. Uh, but yeah, I'll have a link down below if you guys are interested. And then finally, I just want to thank you guys. You guys seriously, closing in on 8,000 subscribers. Cannot thank you guys enough. Um, if you do enjoy all this content, if you leave a like button on the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell so you don't know upload videos you know I'm live, that'd be greatly, greatly appreciated. Let's aim for 250 likes on this video, guys. Uh, but yeah, that, with that all out of the way, let's jump in the video. So before we talk about players and the prices for this slate, let's look back at my lineup here from Saturday's uh, slate. So Saturday, I tried to get a little bit too contrarian. Um... So we can go over my core plays that I gave to uh, members of Patreon. The so core plays were Ben Simmons, Chris Boucher, Ennis Cantor, and Dwight Howard. I played three of the four. Um, I, you know, I got a little bit too contrarian in play, playing Harry Giles. Um, I did not think that Dwight Howard and Ennis Cantor would play that much. Dwight Howard played like 35 minutes. I thought he would play like 25 to 30 and then Tony Bradley would get the rest. Tony Bradley only played nine minutes and Cantor... Played more than I thought too. Also, Portland ran small a little bit. Like they ran a little bit of small ball. I don't know why, because when they did, like Appella and John Collins just abused them. So I was like, I didn't think Portland would go small, but they did for a little bit. So that hurt Giles' minutes. Um, yeah, honestly, should have just played Dwight here and then spent down a little bit uh, elsewhere. But um, you know, I was I was trying to get really contrarian GPPs. Also, Boucher got in some foul trouble. That was a bit unlucky. Um, Tobias had a you know sub you know honestly below average game for his standards with no. Embiid, he didn't play as much as I thought he would. He only played like low 30s minutes. So if that trend is going to continue, like that makes him riskier because he was a guy that was playing like 38-ish minutes a game last year. So like that's obviously a little bit concerning with Tobias Harris and his minutes. Um, yeah, the reason I went down to Giles is I really wanted to play Trey Young. I was really high on the studs in this game. Trey and Damian and Dame Lillard went off. Unfortunately, if you played CJ, he got injured. That sucks because injuries just are the worst. Um, now, Drogic honestly had a bad game. He had a bad game, and he was low-owned. I thought he was a really good play. Um, he had 12 points, 10 assists, 5 turnovers. Um, he, had, he, had, he had his floor game with no hero and Jimmy Butler. Honestly, like Drogic, with those two off the court, he has 40-plus fancy point upside. So I think I got a little bit unlucky there with the fact that Drogic had that. You know, it's still 30 fancy points at, what, 5-7. It's not bad, but, like, definitely could have got a lot more. I took the shot in Kendrick Nunn coming off the benches because there wasn't a ton of, like, standout value. Uh, he was not great either. Five turnovers as well. Um, but yeah, all in all, it's just I should have just stuck with my core, stuck with Dwight, and then spent down a little bit elsewhere. Would have been a really good night. Um, but yeah, just try to get a little bit too contrarian for this one and just miss the cash in tournaments. But that's how it goes sometimes. Um, and that's it for the look back, guys. So let's uh, let's talk about this slate. And yeah, two games early slate. That's not included in the main slate. We have four games on the main slate. 76ers and Thunder. It's a 220 over under. The 76ers are three point favorites. We have Jazz and Nuggets at 221 and a half over under. The Nuggets are one point favorites. Pelicans and Kings at 229 over under. The Pelicans are two point favorites. And Pacers, Clippers are 222 and a half over under. Clippers are six point favorites. So let's start it off with Philly. And still no, no, still no Joel Embiid. So Ben Simmons at the top at 8.6K. I think looks like one of the better spin ups. He honestly had, again, subpar game for his standards. Uh, only 44 fancy points with no Embiid. Expected a little bit more. Um, he had only one block, no steals. Normally, he's a guy that can get you like a couple blocks, a couple steals. So I think Ben Simmons is one of the safer plays on the board. He's still underpriced with no Embiid, right? But 36 minutes, I expect mid 30s minutes for, for Ben Simmons. So um, I really do like him at this price. I think he's a really safe spend up. Good matchup, too. So yeah, I, I do like uh, Ben Simmons a good amount. Now, again, I mentioned it in uh, just now, but Tobias Harris, the minutes, right? So only 32 minutes in that game. That's not great. 
right? 30 there against Miami. Like the minutes have been a little up and down. So if I knew Tobias Harris was going to play 38 minutes, I would really like him because that's what I thought he would play tonight. He only played 32. So it's like, okay. And that was a close game. Does make him a little riskier, right? If he's only going to play low 30s minutes, I'm not as excited about Tobias Harris. But we don't know. The minutes could bounce back up to 38. So it's like, it's a tough one, right? If I knew for sure he's going to play 38 minutes, I would really like him. It's just not great that he only played 32 minutes in a competitive game. That is a little bit worrisome. Now, Shake Milton versus Maxi. Shake Milton once again had a good game. Um, in, in 33 minutes, shot the ball 10 of 18, had 40 fancy points. I think um, right now he is probably the safer option compared to Maxi. Um, you know, both are at similar prices. Maxi only played 25 minutes. So it's like, they might go with a hot hand, but right now uh, Milton's been playing a little bit better. So I think Milton is definitely the safer option over Maxi. You can still go Maxi, but that'll be a, a, a contrarian move for sure. Um, Danny Green, I'm just not playing him at that price. I know the Mets will be there, but I just don't want to do it. And Dwight Howard. So I was a little bit surprised he played 34 minutes tonight. I, I did not think he would play that many minutes. He did. So if Dwight Howard's going to play mid-30s minutes, hard to get away from him at 4.8K with no Embiid. Right, and this matchup too should be able to have his way against like Isaiah Roby and Mike Muscala. So I do like Dwight Howard to get him out. Um, my one concern is, you know, that OKC front court is a little bit smaller, so maybe they could run small ball more on this one. So like that is a slight concern, but it's like even if he only plays like I don't know twenty five to thirty minutes, he can probably still get there at the price. So I think Dwight is is a safe value play for sure um, at, at that price point, and then. Everyone else can. Bradley, I thought he would play a little bit more off the bench. He didn't. He only played nine minutes, so don't think we can go there. Um, and that's that's about it for Philly. So let's move on to OKC. Um, SGA at the top at 8.3K, I think, even in a tough matchup, is, is firmly in play here. There's no Al Horford. Offense is just him, right? It just runs through SGA. So um, I think he's a, a guy that has a good amount of upside. If this game stays close, most likely even because of SGA. So um, I think he is a, a good spend up there at the top. Again, not as good of a matchup here, but still like him. Basically, he's just been up and down. Um, I just don't think I can do it right now. Yeah, just minutes up and down. Production, not shooting the ball well either. Unless you're trying to get super contrarian, I just don't think I can do it. Um, Diallo came back down to earth, only played 14 minutes. They're just, the OKC bench, they ride the hot hand. I don't like that. Dort had like a set, six steal game. Yeah, I'm not chasing that, right? He had 46 fancy points. He had six steals. He shot the ball well. Let's look back and, and see what he's done so far this year. 21, 15, 18, 17, 12, 18, 18, 22, 12, and then 46. So I remember I got ripped on. Uh, some guy in the comments was, where is uh, Hamadou Diallo? Because I was like, I don't think, I don't I was like, no, Fade Diallo, that's chasing. And he had back-to-back -back 40 fantasy point games. Well, look what he's done since. 24, 17, 11, right? So it's like, these guys, like Hamadou Diallo, Lou Dort are not 40 plus fancy point guys. So it's like, eh, right? Don't love either. George Hill's at 4-4. Did play 33 minutes, uh, they'll ask him, which is good to see. But the game did, did go to overtime. Again, like, I don't know if we have to go there. The guy that I do like is, is Isaiah Roby at 4-2. With no Horford, he should start at center. He did foul out, too. Um, should play mid to high 20s minutes. I think he's one of the better value plays on the board there at that price. Don't mind Muscala, who's he'll be the backup big. Again, he got extended a bit a little bit more because Roby fouled out. So, like, you could punt with Muscala, but definitely do prefer Roby. And that's it. Like, Kenneth Williams did get some run off the bench. It's just, again, they're going to go with a hot hand. I just, I don't know if I trust these OKC bench guys. Like, probably one of those guys will have a good game, but I just don't know if you have to go there. So, let's move on to Utah and Denver. Utah's a team that, again, Normally, I just don't have a ton of interest in. Donovan Mitchell at 8-5. Matchup solid here. Um, and we saw this. Uh, there was amazing playoff series between Utah and Denver in the bubble. Um, I think, you know, Mitchell is is a fine play at this price. N not a priority. I think I do, do prefer some other studs. Uh, but if you want to go to Mitchell, I don't think he's the worst play. Rudy Gobert is always, like, solid, too. I mean, you don't love targeting centers against Nicole Jokic. But I think he's he's a decent play. Mike Conley at 7-1. Again, it's just, like, everyone just seems priced right like i think conley does have some upside here but also has a somewhat low floor seven one again he's a solid play clarkson with no joe ingles has been getting a little bit more run off the bench also think is decent it's like all all like the main guys i think are like again filler guys like am i going to go out of my way to play any of like the main jazz guys i don't think so like bojan scoring dependent royce o'neill a little too pricey so 
you know, with Mitchell, Gobert, Conley, Clarkson, I think those guys are all pretty solid plays. They remind me of like the main Toronto guys tonight, right? With Siakam, Lowry, Van Fleet. I was like, hey, minutes will be there for them. It's a good matchup. Does one really stand out? No. And that's kind of how I feel about these Utah guys. Good matchup. Minutes will be there. I think these guys are fine. It's like they're filler options. I'm not going to start my lineup with one of these guys. But if you land on one of them, I'm not going to talk you off of me. I don't think they're bad plays. They're just like mediocre plays that seem priced about right. Let's move on to Denver. So Denver, we have Jokic at the top at 11-2. I think does go a little bit overlooked on the slate because of the matchup, but still has upside. Uh, playing big men, it's got offense running through him, obviously. So I'm still fine with Jokic as a contrarian GPP play. Probably not a guy to look to in cash because the price plus the matchup, but you can still go there in GPPs. Jamal Murray, finding flashes upside. It's been a little bit, been a while for him, but he had 40 fancy points. Um, you know, even shot the ball not well, 6 of 18. I think he's always in play for GPPs just because the up and down nature of his game but yeah when he's getting it going we've seen the upside barton at 6k you know was still still not michael porter jr should play mid 30s minutes and again eh, seems priced about right i don't really want to play mill sap gary harris is too dependent on the scoring jermichael green did get extended a little bit last game again i think he's like a solid value if you need someone cheap and like the bench guys morris dozier they're okay but no one that really really stands out for me on the on the uh nuggets Moving on to the Pelicans and the, and the Kings. So this is probably my favorite game to target. Um, the Pelicans, you guys know I love targeting players against the Kings. So Ingram, Zion, I do like a good amount. Again, Reggie Jackson had 25 fancy points in 16 minutes last night. And the game blowout, he didn't play in, play in overtime. Kawhi Leonard had mid-40s fancy points through three quarters. So it's like, this is a really good matchup. There's no lines of ball. I think Ingram and Zion look like two of the better spin-ups of the slate. I like them both a lot here in this spot. So, um, yeah, really, really do like both. I think Steven Adams is safe. He finally had, like, a floor game and played 33 minutes. But, you know, normally he's pretty consistent. I think he's a safe option. Um, you know, kind of have a little bit of upside. Again, I do like the spot here. So, I think Adams is solid. And it's going to be interesting to see what they do with the starting lineup. Because they started the NAW last game, and he got, like, five fouls in, like, 10 minutes. Luckily, he played a little bit in the garbage time to kind of salvage a, a decent game. Again, he's a good point for a guy. If he starts a point guard again, I would like him in the spot. I would. Because he's a good offensive player. So, like, if they start on the W, I would have interest in him at 4-9. If they bring him off the bench, he's a little riskier. If they start Bledsoe, would like him more. So, it's like, yeah, these guards have been a little up and down. Um, I think upside, you know, honestly might be a little bit higher in NAW um, if he starts. But we'll see. We'll see what they do. So, like, got to monitor that starting lineup news. Josh Hart's at 5-1. You know, has been getting some decent minutes. I think would be, like, an okay play. Like, am I going to prioritize Josh Hart? No. But I think he's, like, uh, a solid play. J.J. Redick at 3-9 with no Lonzo. Has been like some okay run. 28, 26 minutes. Again, relying on the scoring. So you know what you're getting out of him, right? Six rebounds, a little more of an outlier performance from him, to be honest. So, like, he's in, always in play for GPPs. And that's it for the uh, Pelican side. So, yeah, really Ingram, Zion, like, a lot at the top. I think Adams is a decent play in the mid-range. Then whoever starts the point guard, whether it be Le uh, Bledsoe or NAW, I would like a good amount. Let's move on to the Kings. So De'Aaron Fox at 7-9. I do like the price for him. Again, everyone in the Kings kind of busted. They just got blown out last game. So not super, super worried about that uh, performance there. Um, he's a guy that can stop the stat sheet. And sure, the Pelicans, you know, are playing at a slower pace this year. Uh, but they're still not like a, like a great defensive team. They just play a little bit slower. So like De'Aaron Fox at 7-9, I think it is firmly in play. And if you wanted to kind of stack it up, if you wanted to go Ingram and Zion and like NAW, and you wanted one guy to bring it back with. I think the bring back would be Deer and Fox for me. Healed a little bit too reliant on scoring for me. Or Sean Holmes is always in play for GPPs, right? If you can stay out of foul trouble, normally you can have a decent night. Um, yeah, six seven though. It's not like we're getting him an amazing discount. Barnes coming back down to earth. Twenty three and twenty nine fans points last couple games. I think he's still solid. Like the minutes will be there for him. Um, again, okay option. We get do have to monitor a couple of pieces of news here. So Marvin Bagley is questionable, and Hassan Whiteside are questionable. If Bagley's out, I'm curious to see what they do with the starting lineup. Because obviously it's going to be Fox, Heald, Holmes, Barnes. Do they move Halliburton in the starting lineup and go small? Or do they move, like, maybe Bielitsa gets back in the rotation and he starts? So, like, there could be some value here with the Kings um, if Marvin Bagley's out. So I'd be curious to see what they do with the starting lineup. Um, either way, if yeah, if Bagley's out, like, even if Halliburton doesn't start, he should get some more minutes. So he'd be a little bit intriguing there at 6-4. And what a wish he was a little bit cheaper, to be honest. Bagley himself, if he does play, would be like a decent option. Uh, but if he's out, again, that's where we could get some value. Maybe a guy like Bielitsa or, you know, Glenn Robinson. 
Uh, we'll see what they do with the starting lineup if if he, in fact, is out. Whiteside, questionable, doesn't do a ton. He missed the last game. It was Met 2 that, that kind of played the backup five. Uh, got extended a bit because of the blowout. Um, so, yeah, he's also a decent point per minute guy. If Whiteside's out, you can take a shot in him and maybe hope, like, Holmes gets some foul trouble. But that, that would be it. It was just a bit deep uh, shot in GPPs. All right, let's finish up with the Pacers and the Clippers. So, Pacers, uh, again, no Oladipo. So bonus Brogdon, this is where the offense is being run. And like, sure, matchup's not the best, but these guys are just safe options. They're both playing huge minutes, 38 in a blowout last game against Portland. Again, they got pulled with like two or three minutes left. Brogdon, 35. So it's like, I like them both. I do. I think they're safe options. Even this matchup, I do like Brogdon. I do like Sabonis a good amount. Even Miles Turner is viable because minutes recently. He played 42 there against Golden State, was on pace for about 40 the last game, and it blew out. So like, if Miles Turner's going to continue to play about 40 minutes a night, he is in play. I do prefer Sabonis. I do prefer Brogdon, but not saying Turner's out of play. The value is where it gets tricky because they're going to go with the hot hand here with Justin Holiday, McDermott, Aaron Holiday, Edmund Sumner. They even have McConnell. Jeremy Lamb, They haven't. he might be back. We'll see. That would be even another body in the rotation. So it's like all these guys are okay value, but I never have a good like feel on any of them because they just go with the hot hand. Like McDermott is probably the guy that has the most upside, but also very score independent. We saw in that game against Golden State, 10 fancy points. If he's making his shots like he was against Sacramento, he can go for 30 plus. But just, you know, again, floor is low. Justin Holiday, again, the minutes are up and down on him. I think he would be like an okay value option. Same with Aaron Holiday. Teach McConnell had a decent game on the bench. He's like the best point for a guy of them all, but like the minutes are always the lowest on him. So it's like, does one really stand out? Not really, but I'm okay if you want to take a shot on one of those guys. It's just I never have a good feel on it when they're all when they're all there. And then finally, Clipper. So Kawhi Leonard, Paul Jordan, think look like decent options. You know, I'm not as high in them. I don't like the spot here against the Pacers as much as I did against the Kings. Again, in 28 minutes, he had 43 fantasy points. was on pace to smash, and the game blew out. Really unfortunate, because I could have had a huge night if that game would have stayed close. Would have had, you know, another you know another quarter of Kawhi Leonard and Reggie Jackson. But what can you do? Can't predict blowouts like that. Um, yeah, Kawhi at 9-7 and Paul George at 9-5, I think, are both decent spend-ups, right? Minutes should be high 30s for these guys if the game stays competitive. So I have no issue with either of them. I think they're safer spend-ups. Ibaka a little too pricey there at 6K. Uh, Batum, eh, I'll pass. Lou Williams, questionable. Pat Beverly back. Uh, he'll start. I think he's like, again, yeah, 4-8 is not an amazing price for him. Marcus Morris, I think, is like a decent value play. Probably plays 20 to 25 minutes. Yeah, again, viable. Reggie not really in play with uh with Pat Beverly back and he had 18 minutes 24 fancy points but with with Pat Beverly back I don't think he plays a ton. Canard if like Lou Williams is out you could see some more minutes for Canard but again pretty low reliant in the scoring so honestly it's kind of the main guys it's it's it's, it's uh Kawhi and Paul George and look pretty decent options the rest of the plays are just no one really stands out to me. Um, but yeah, I think that's going to wrap it up for the video today, guys. So if you have been enjoying the content so far, I would really appreciate it. If you leave a like button on the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell so you don't upload videos you don't go live. As always, I will be doing a live stream on YouTube to go to you on YouTube to go over everything and answer all you guys' questions. Uh, but thanks again. Have a great night, guys, and I'll see you all tomorrow.